Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. Uh, today I want to talk about the tab key and uh, a program called Carabina. So back a few episodes ago in the screencast about folding, I was lamenting that you can't map tab and control I independently because those keys are actually perceived as being the same by the terminal and any application running inside it. And so if you do a search like I have here for control I, tab, terminal, vim, you're going to wind up with a bunch of questions and complaints about how you can't map one without overriding the other. Um, and the answer that is usually given is that you know, this is impossible um, because the terminal is like 40 years old of legacy technology. I decided that I was kind of sick of dealing with this problem and so turned to a program called Carabina which allows you to map keys to other things um, in OS X. So I'm going to show you today how I'm using this to enable me to independently map tab and control I. So let's go to the terminal here and uh, look at a file with something foldable in it, like my Z chassis. So you may recall from the previous episode on folding that I wanted to set up tab so that I could toggle folds. Um, so if I hit tab, you'll see that I've successfully done that. The problem that I was complaining about, though, is that in doing this, I had effectively broken control I. So let's see whether it's still broken. I'm going to jump around the file a bit. Move up and down a bit. I'm basically populating the jumps list, which you can read all about in the help under colon jumps. Effectively shows you like all the places you've been in a file. And as it says here in the help, with control O and control I, you can move in and out of the jump list. So it's a great way to figure out where you've been and get back there. So for example, if I just hit O repeatedly, you see it jumping through the places where I've been. Then if I hit I, I move back into the jump list. So I can go back and forward, back and forward. So you notice that that actually worked. Um, and if you look at the keycaster thing down the bottom there, it, when I hit Control O, it shows Control O. When I hit Control I, it shows F6. That is the clue to the hack that I've implemented using Carabiner. So I'll show you what that looks like right now. Um, effectively, what I'm doing here is mapping tab to ZA, which toggles folds. And that was the behavior that I desired. But then I'm taking F6, function key, and mapping that to control I. And then I'm using Carabina behind the scenes to make sure that every time I press control I, it's actually going to send F6. And Vim is going to see F6 and treat it as though it's control I. So I can have my cake and eat it too. Tab does what I want in normal mode, and control I still takes me back into the jump list. Um, this will work in Mac Vim too. So let me open Mac Vim and just show you that. I'm going to open the same file here, and where am I? There's a fold. You see, tab works to toggle folds. I can jump around, and then once I've created a few jumps, I can hit Control O to go out of the jump list and Control I to go into the jump list. It works in MacVim just as it does in the terminal. So let's look at the actual configuration that I'm using to do that. Uh, I have this private XML file which just includes a bunch of other configuration files. So I'm going to show you the one that does the magic. It is a terminal.xml. Uh, it's pretty simple. All it's really doing is taking the L key and whether it's whenever it's pressed with left or right control, it is actually turning that into an F6. The reason why I'm doing this to the L key and not the I key is because I actually type using the Colmac keyboard layout. So I'm hitting what is actually key L in the QWERTY layout, but is key I in Colmac. So what this does is turn my control eyes into F6, where Vim can interpret them and do what I want. I figured F6 was a pretty low risk key to use because I'm literally not using F6 for anything else. Um, but even so, I did want to scope it just to the terminal and just to Vim. So this only works in iTerm, Terminal, Mac Vim. If I were to do this in any other application and hit Control I, it would actually would send Control I down by an application. So that is how you can use Carabina to map Control I and Tab independently. I'm going to show you the Carabina settings because there are a couple of gotchas here. One is that if you want to implement the per application filtering such that it only applies in the terminal and Vim, you have to make sure that the so called AX notifier is enabled. This is effectively what watches to see what application is frontmost um, and enables Carabina to apply this override selectively. Um, 
once you've set up your private XML file, you hit reload XML and the option that you've created will appear in the list here, in this case, control I to F6 in the terminal. There's a couple of other useful tools under Carabiner that are worth looking at. There's this event viewer. When you're trying to figure out how, what values to put in your XML configuration files, you can just type in this window. Um, for example, I'm hitting control I now, and that's how I knew that key code L was definitely the one that I should use. Um, there's also this app thing that when I switch apps, uh, like if I go to Chrome, tells me what the application bundle identifier is um, so that I can effectively use that if I were to make a custom only filter here. Um, so the event handler is pretty handy um, in for debugging things. Um, before I go, I'm just going to show you what other things I use Carabiner for. Uh, I use this modifiers thing because I am using uh, Colmac, like I said. In Colmac, the caps lock key is supposed to be backspace, but I want to use it for control as well. So what this configuration does is make it such that when I tap that uh, caps lock, I get backspace. But when I hold it down and press another key, I'm actually going to get control plus that other key. And finally, if I just hold it and don't do any cording at all, it's going to do, after a delay, backspace with key repeat. And for symmetry, I actually did the same on the other side of the keyboard. So I turn return into, into right control with the same semantics. Tapping it's going to be return. Pressing and holding it is going to be return with key repeat. And holding it and cording it with another key is going to be control. Uh, I also do some things for my real force keyboard. Um, that's an external keyboard. I make the function keys behave kind of like the media keys on the internal Mac laptop keyboard. Um, so that's done using this file. I have a so called space FN layout, which enables me to use the cursor keys by holding down the space bar and pressing the inverted T triangle that is under the right hand on the home row. So on the QWERTY keyboard layout, that would be JKLI, an inverted T. Uh, and whenever I hold down space and use one of those keys, it's actually going to move the cursor. Not so relevant for Vim because you're mostly using HJKL and Vim but I do find it handy in, in other scenarios. Uh, the other thing to note about this is if you just hold down space without cording any of those or tapping of those other keys, it's going to wind up being repeated space after a delay. Uh, then there's that terminal file, which I already showed you. And the last thing I use uh, Carabiner for is to make my YubiKey, which is a two-factor auth thing, behave nicely even though I am using a Colmac keyboard layout and it assumes that the whole world is QWERTY. Um, so those are all the custom settings that I have in Carabiner. Uh, I also think I use some built-in ones such as the ability to tap both space keys to activate caps lock. I can't actually see it here in the list right now, I might just be missing it. Um, but yeah, we have the ability to activate, yeah, we hold down both shift keys, that turns on caps lock. I tap either left or right shift, that turns off caps lock. I find that's pretty handy because otherwise it would be hard for me to shout when I'm arguing with someone online. So this screencast has been about Carabiner. Um, it's definitely worth checking out, but I'm super excited that I can finally use tab and command, control I independently in Vim at last. Um, but after this, I've got some more things to tell you about the tab key. So tune into the next screencast where I will be talking about snippets and completion.